Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the Green New York Lunchtime Learning uh, webinar series. My name is Brendan Woodruff. I'm the DEC co-lead of the Green New York Council, uh, and I'm happy to welcome you all here today for a great presentation on uh, one that we think is pretty timely. Uh, we're getting some spring weather here, so it's time to start thinking about uh, lawn equipment. I know we've had a <clears throat> pretty hard winter compared to other years, but the, uh, the grass will be growing again. Um, I can assure you of that. Um, and we're going to have to deal with it uh, in one way or another. So we might as well find the most environmentally friendly way to do so. So a couple housekeeping things here as we get started today. Everyone is on mute when you join. If you do have questions or comments as we go along, please type them into the chat box. Uh, we will get to questions and comments at the end. Uh, in addition, this is being recorded and it will be posted on the Green New York website afterwards. Uh, we'll put a link to that in the chat here as well. So if there's something you missed, you can go back and see it, or you can share it with uh, coworkers or others as well. Uh, in addition, next month's webinar is going to be taking place on Tuesday, April 13th. It's going to be on sustainable outdoor recreation. We've got some folks from DEC presenting on that. Um, so we're thinking spring here with our next uh, upcoming things. Um, also, as most of you know, Earth Week is coming up in April. So if you're doing anything interesting uh, at your agencies or have anything else going on, feel free to type that into the chat box and let us know as well. We're always happy to hear about what people have planned for Earth Week. So with that, uh, I'm going to hand it over to today's presenter, uh, Ryan Torres, who is with the Battery Park City Authority. She's also the uh, co-chair of the Green New York Operations and Engagement Subcommittee. Thank you, Brendan. Can can you hear me? I guess. Yep. Okay, great. Good. I know we I know we just practiced, but like me to touch something and and just the whole thing blow up my face. So, thank you. Um, thank you for that introduction. Yes. Hi, my name is uh, Ryan Torres. I'm the assistant VP of Parks Operations for Battery Park City Authority, um, and um, help out the Green NY in every which way I can, um, as it's a great resource for everybody. Um, so I'd like to thank you for taking time out of your lunch to listen to this, this month's uh, Lunch and Learn. Um, and I'm here to talk to you about electric lawn equipment. Brendan is right, hopefully, uh, uh, fingers crossed, spring is, is happening and the turf and the plants will be growing. Um, so unfortunately, I'm not gonna dive into the best and worst products out there because I'll be honest with you, I don't have the, uh, the right answers for those. Um, but uh, I'm also no expert on the subject of gas powered and electric, but what I can say is that uh, being in the field of horticulture for over 20 years and being a fourth generation landscaper, I can understand that there might be some hesitancy even think about making the switch from gas powered to um, electric, or even how to start the conversation about switching. My hope and goal is that by doing this today is that you think about exploring opportunities there are to investigate using lawn, uh, electric lawn equipment um, in, into your everyday operations. Oh, let me get my, hold on, sorry. Uh-oh, oh, here we go, okay. Um, I think the best information that I'm going to be able to give you all today, hopefully, will come from the experience that Battery Park City Authority has had with our electric lawn equipment, um, which we'll go into a little bit later into the presentation. Um, but what I'll also talk about are the pros and cons of electric lawn equipment, uh, the noise and air pollution, and some quick facts and some resources at the very end. So um, without further ado, it's no secret that electric equipment is money saving, energy efficient, and easy to use. However, it's estimated that still over 5 million gas powered mowers are still sold in the US every year. I'd like to support and encourage everyone watching or listening um, in to look into using some electric lawn equipment into their everyday operations. So according to the EPA, one gas mower running for an hour emits the same amount of pollutants as 11 new cars driving 55 miles an hour for the same amount of time. So just think that by replacing just one piece of equipment um, on the difference you can make, let alone a variety of um, equipment. All right. For 
years, people have talked and written about the benefits of switching to electric lawn equipment, yet the adaption of the concept seems to be uh, painfully slow. We hear all about going organic and using natives, um, planting the right plant in the right place. These are things that we hear um, in every webinar and every uh, lesson we learn when it comes to landscape. And then even in our everyday life, the commercials we watch and um, everything that we're reading, we hear the benefits of electric vehicles. And yet it seems like the electric lawn equipment kind of doesn't fall into one or the other. And so I'm hopeful that we can kind of add the electric lawn equipment into the commonly talked about good for, you know, good for the landscape, good for the world kind of topic. So when I talk about um, electric lawn equipment, really what I'm talking about are lawn mowers, uh, leaf blowers, weed whackers, trimmers, other small um, equipment that we typically use in our day-to-day -day operations to keep the landscape looking good. Um, it also comes in two different forms, corded and cordless. I think, um, I think it's safe to say for the sake of this webinar, we're probably talking about the cordless kind because um, if you have a cord hanging from your piece of equipment, you're kind of limited to how far you can go, um, but that is definitely a really, a really great option. Um, although at Battery Park City Authority, we only have the uh, cordless as of now. Um, some of the uh, pros and cons of electric equipment. Um, the pros, it's potential for lightweight, despite uh, what you might hear later on some of the feedback I've gotten from our staff for our particular equipment, but for the most part, it is more lightweight than the gas power counterparts. Smaller in size, which might not seem like a really big selling point to a lot of people, but I can tell you um, when you're in downtown Manhattan, storage is um, critical, and uh, so smaller in size is not, is not a bad thing. Um, it's environmentally conscious and friendly, which is what we're all about and where we're trying to strive for, so that seems like an easy win. Typically, it can be lower in maintenance. I've, sp I've spoken to our mechanics, and um, they can agree that, um, in general, it definitely has lower, ma uh, lower maintenance needs with no, uh, you know, spark plugs or carburetors or any of those other working, you know, kind of things, the motors that make it all very um, high maintenance at times, um, it's really reduced to a minimal amount of uh, maintenance. More quiet, which is um, really great uh, for Battery Park City Authority. We're right smack in the middle of a residential space and all residents um, care what what the what the what the outdoors sound like um, at all times, but especially in the morning and stuff like that. So they are generally way more quiet than the gas powered. And then there's no need for fuel and oil, um, which I just think is a really great benefit. There's so many things that you know already do need fuel, um, you know, and this is just like one of those extra, you know, you're kind of carrying around this this tank and keeping it fueled up, so not needing that fuel or the oil um, is a really big pro for me. Some of the cons, because it's not always good news, is that um, when we talk about electric um, um, equipment, obviously it needs to get its power from somewhere, so when it's the cordless type, that power comes from a battery, and so that battery needs to be recharged. Uh, just like your cell phone, right? You got to plug it in to keep it going. So the recharging factor can be a little bit of a con. Um, obviously, the battery life can be a con because um, it can only go for as long as the battery is going. Um, many would argue that it lacks the same uh, power as gas-powered mowers or um, any equipment, really, and that uh, water tends to not be its friend, which we've um, discovered here at Battery Park City Authority. And those are just to name a few. I'm sure we could probably go off into a, a whole topic of what the good and the bad are of it. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not keeping up brand I apologize. Um, there are my pros and cons. The uh, noise and air pollution, I think that these two things are kind of obvious, but I feel like I would be doing this seminar, a webinar in injustice by not mentioning it. Gas-powered equipment emits high levels of airborne pollutants and greenhouse gases that affect the environment. 
Um, electric mowers don't totally eliminate pollution. I think that we are, you know, I think we're not trying to suggest that electric is going to fix everything. However, the emissions from the electric industry are more regulated. Um, the uh, EPA says that in 2011, approximately 26.7 million tons of pollutants were still emitted because of lawn and garden equipment. And the National Institute of Health equates the sound of a gasoline lawnmower to that of a loud motorcycle. And that's just what people are hearing around it. The operator is hearing um, 95 to 115 decibels, which is like being at a rock concert, which is great, but when you're doing it you know, when you're not actually at a rock concert and you're doing it day in and day out, um, it can be harmful to, you know, to yourself and to others. So uh, Battery Park City Authority's experience with electric equipment. I would say it was probably in 2018 when we decided, um, um, when we decided that uh, we were going to purchase some you know, some major purchases for some um, electric lawn equipment. Um, and I feel like even though there was a lot of options, um, the, the power factor was a big concern for a lot of the staff and a lot of the operators that we were kind of, you know, going back and forth with. And so uh, we kind of did a lot of research, you know, did a lot of um, Googling and asking around and, and kind of finding a variety of uh, manufacturers. Um, once we kind of landed on one, we reached out to them, and uh, we were able to set up a, um, I would say like a, you know, a trial, a trial run, if you will. And they actually came to Battery Park City Authority with, you know, their mowers, their blowers, and all the, you know, the different um, electric lawn equipment that they had to offer. Um, once here, we also invited some of our neighbor public park uh, friends to come check it out to try to um, encourage them to also investigate some of these. Uh, once the machinery was on site or the equipment was on site, we had obviously the operators. Um, you know, Rob here is our turf specialist. Um, but we had any, any of the operators that would be using this um, whether it's mostly or even just sometimes. We had the directors of not just maintenance, but of horticulture on site to also trial it. We even had the mechanics, because um, obviously they play a large role in um, all of our equipment. They need to, uh, you know, feel good about um, what it is that they're getting themselves into as well. So they were on site and they were able to not just open it up and take a look at it, but ask questions to the, um, to the vendor and kind of get down to some of the things that they cared most about it. And it was great because um, I think all the staff had an opportunity to do that as well. And the manufacturer was, uh, the vendor was there to really answer those questions, which I thought was um, really helpful. In the end, we ended up buying a ride-on mower, a push mower, and a couple of backpack blowers. Um, and it was really, um, decided that that's how we were going to do it because um, the staff kind of came together and we decided, yep, let's let's get these and let's let's try them out. Um, so, in time, we tried a couple other electric as new things came out. We tried a couple other um, manufacturers that came out with um, electric, especially handheld leaf blowers. That was something that we were kind of lacking in our arsenal of electric equipment. Um, and what what we found with the electric equipment was it was really useful because we clean um, the playgrounds and the paths early in the morning, and it was really great um, to have that uh, quiet, that quiet uh, being able to perform our work and not make the noise because our residents, you know, uh, care. You know, they 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 want they'll let us know. So. Um, in time, we learned why some of the equipment was better for our applications than others. Uh, for example, um, the backpack blower, um, which is a little contradicting to my pro before, but at the time, the backpack blower was actually a little too heavy for some of the staff members. Um, and um, it was uh, also didn't have quite 
the power that it needed sometimes. If, for example, if we were cleaning up the playground and we tend to blow the playground sand back into the space, but if it's wet or damp, then you need that extra power. Sometimes that wasn't fulfilling our needs there. Um, also that our mulching deck on our ride-on mower, it didn't seem to pull the turf up with the same kind of power which gave it that nice cut. Um, this was just some of the feedback that, you know, that we received. There was plenty of uh, good stuff um, as well. But all the while, we kind of just listened to the staff and heard what they had to say and, you know, tried to make things work. If it didn't, we trialed other things um, because, again, there's just there's so many options out there. It just kind of never ends. Um, what I can tell you is that I, we don't regret going through this process and the importance of bringing our coworkers um, and their opinions has made a huge difference from those who are um, going to maintain them to those who are actually going to be using them, um, getting their, their thoughts, their real um, opinions about everything was just really critical in the process. Um, as a follow-up, I think it's also important that you continue to ask questions. Um, you know, sometimes I, you know, notice something wasn't being used and it wasn't until I asked that I realized that there was something, you know, that could have been better, um, something that could have been, you know, tweaked a little bit. Um, and so I think it's important that you follow up, right? Or if you're the user, it's important that you mention it because, um, the end goal here is to work with something that is helpful in our day-to-day -day operations. And it's also important to manage expectations, right? Say, hey, this might work sometimes, but it won't work all the time, or, you know, things like that. Um, because I think at the end it's all a matter of um, using electric lawn equipment as much and as often as we can. So what's next for Battery Park City Authority? Um, you know, we continue to investigate um, electric equipment as it comes out. Um, we continue to try to um, try new products um, and listen to manufacturers. We try to share our information in hopes that, you know, we can kind of um, help weed through some of the stuff that's going on there. Um, we also continue to uh, look for any new and innovative ways to work with electric uh, lawn equipment, and we'll continue to do that, um, you know, probably forever. We have a really bigger, big goal um, in our sustainability plan, um, in our electric vehicle infrastructure section, right, because electric lawn equipment doesn't seem to fall in anywhere, but the goal is to replace EPCA's um, on-road, off-road vehicle suite with 100% electric vehicles and explore opportunities for biofuel for other maintenance and specialized equipment. So as we continue to work towards that goal, we're going to continue to start phasing out um, gas-powered stuff and trying to phase in um, electric, electric equipment. So some uh, quick facts here just, you know, to kind of drive it home, according to the EPA, one gas uh, mower releases 88 pounds of greenhouse gas and 34 pounds of other pollutants. Over 17 million gallons of gas are spilled. That's just spilled, not used, each year refueling the lawn and garden equipment. And Americans can burn 800 million gallons of gas just mowing our uh, turf. And then um, I think it's important to mention just a little bit here that according to the Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, um, that New York State does have um, big goals and part of it is that 85% reduction in greenhouse gases by emissions by 2025 so that by using electric equipment, even if you're just swapping out a few, makes, makes a difference and will help work towards those goals. Um, if you're involved in the EO4 report, that purchasing and using of electric lawn equipment can be used as a success story in the sustainable landscape section of the report. I see a typo now, I apologize. Um, so that's, you know, that's really great. Um, and also, if you are looking to purchase electric lawn equipment or you don't know where to start, 
I think that uh, OGS is always a great place to start. We do have a contract um, that has some electric lawn equipment in there that you can kind of look into or it might be a good place to start um, investigating some of the options out there. And I think that um, my end note is to just keep your eyes open. And I think that if there's moments where you can swap out some gas electric, uh, gas powered equipment to some electric equipment, I think that um, it's, it's a win every time. Um, so thank you, um, Brendan and, and everybody. And I'm happy to answer questions. I'm not sure if I can answer all of them, because again, I'm not a, an expert in all things electric lawn equipment, but I'm happy to um, try it out. Yeah, thanks, Ryan. That was fantastic. Um, and it's always good to be able to hear from folks that have actually used the equipment, tried it out in the real world and seen uh, what that works. Another benefit uh, I'll list here as well is that you're not going to throw your back out before you even start mowing the lawn by pulling on the yeah. cord a million times trying to get it to start. As someone who's yeah. done that a couple times, uh, it's not fun. Yeah. Um, so we've got a bunch of questions here. Um, so I'm going to try and get through what we have. So the first one is revolving around pricing. Now I know you're buying for the authority versus just somebody on the general market, but have you yeah. seen, uh, is there a price premium for the electric equipment? And if so, does that usually get made up um, in terms of a lower operating cost over time? Yeah, so I, I would say um, now I feel like the electric equipment um, has, has, is, is fairly comparable to the gas powered one. It is not over the top much more money than that, um, than the gas powered ones, maybe a little bit more back in, when we, when we started purchasing them at BPCA, it was a huge expense for sure, um, but I feel like it's gotten better. And the operating costs, um, not just with the maintenance, um, you know, not needing all, again, the spark plugs and the carburetors and all these things that I don't know anything about that we're constantly kind of purchasing for the small engine equipment, um, you're, not, you're not, you know, you don't need those. And so that makes a difference. Um, over the course of a year, over the course of a season, over the course of a couple of years, um, and also um, not needing fuel, which obviously, given given the day, could really add up as well, depending on how much that is. So yeah, I think even though you might put a little money up front, in the long run, you're definitely saving um, money. And I think uh, another benefit too would be you're not going to end up with your lawnmower stuck in the middle of the yard when you run out of gas and then having to drive to the store to get more. So you're burning even more fossil fuels to get fossil fuels to get your lawnmower yeah. back in your house. Um, That's true. That's true. Been there. Um, so another question that came in here is how long does this equipment usually uh, run for? Um, if you could yeah. just go through, like if you know, like the leaf blower, weed whacker, push mower, things like that. Yeah, again, you know, I can I can really just kind of speak on our experience, but um, it seems like we could get, um, you know, an hour to an hour and a half from our blowers, our, our handheld um, blowers. Um, the lawnmower, I believe, um, is somewhere in that neighborhood too, maybe an hour and a half to two hours. Um, it seems like it, it hasn't been too much of an issue for us. Um, we don't have a, a tremendous amount of acreage, although we do have a couple of um, significant sized lawns, but we haven't gotten, um, on the flip side of Brendan's uh, suggestion before, we haven't gotten stuck at mid mow because the battery died either. Um, and I think that it was really easy to tell because every manufacturer, that's gonna be one of their biggest selling points is this is how long you can expect to you know, the battery to last and so on and so forth, because that is the biggest concern. Well, one of the bigger concerns, right, is if it takes you four hours to mow your, you know, the turf area, but you're only getting two hours worth of batteries, then, you know, you just know that it's going to take some time. But for us, it seems to have been anywhere between an hour and two hours for everything, and it's been fine. Um, but again, it's, it's a big selling point for all manufacturers. It's one of the first couple of bullets that they'll tell you is how long their battery lasts for. Mm -hmm. And we've got somebody here who also just mentioned that all of their electric lawn equipment is corded, so they never run out of power. Um, and that is an option too, if you are, you know, have a, a smaller lawn or you're not worried about 
you know, accidentally um, cutting it with the weed whacker, which I have also done um, with a cord of weed whacker. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, so I, another a question here came in about uh, batteries. Um, hmm. And they met, somebody mentioned that most of the companies that are out there that they've looked at use different battery technology that's not compatible with other companies. Yeah. How have you navigated that in terms of, you know, do you buy all from the same company and are those batteries interchangeable amongst like the leaf blower and the weed whacker? Um, yeah. Or do you have like a proprietary charger and battery for each one? No. So, yeah. So we've been working. We, um, so far, it seems like we work with um, pieces of equipment that kind of have batteries that are interchangeable uh, just because um, it, it makes the most sense for us. We, we have you know, each division, whether it's the maintenance of a horticulture division, you know, you're kind of grabbing it at different times for different reasons. And so, um, you know, not not a 20 minute conversation about where's my battery, you know, isn't happening. And so um, the two the two biggest types of electric lawn equipment that we use do have interchangeable batteries. So it's, it just makes um, sense if you can find one that one, one size fits all kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then are there separate batteries for sale? Like let's say you wanted to have one charging while the other one's being used, if you yeah. wanted to use it for more than an hour and a half, do they most yeah. places offer those? Yep, yep, there are. And um, as a matter of fact, we do have extra batteries just so that we can um, minimize any downtime, not just in our day-to-day -day operation, but also in general, you know what I mean? Oh, the battery went bad and now it's like, okay, let's order a new one, right? And so we kind of um, kind of have extra batteries and that's, and that's fine. That's, you know, again, they all fit together. And another battery question here is about end of life management. Do the companies have take back programs or are there ways to recycle the batteries when they're um, yeah. at the end of their life? Yeah, I mean that's a that's a great question actually. I haven't reached out to our vendor if it if it has a take back. I mean at Battery Park City Authority we do manage our um, hazardous waste, which you know batteries are included in part of that in a um, in a way that they all get recycled. Um, so we we tend to go that way, but I think that the take back is actually a really great question, and I never thought to call them and. I'll be sure to do that today and start that trend. Um, but yes, we do. We do, um, you know, recycle our batteries if if it you know if it comes down to that as an as an end of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and another question here: the riding mowers that you have, do those run uh -huh. on? Um, are they on the removable batteries or are they like plugged in like an electric car is plugged in? You know, the batteries are in the in the unit itself. Yeah, um I it's they're all plug in batteries. So those are the batteries that you put into the machine. Um mm -hmm. and not necessarily, you know, like an electric cord that kind of comes out of it that you charge overnight. Um they're all battery operated. Okay. And are there any specific um, requirements for charging, or is it just a regular household outlet for everything? Yep, just a regular household outlet. I mean, we got a bunch of electricians on staff, and I haven't heard them complain about having to do anything specific again. Okay. Not, uh, but but it seems like yeah, we just kind of have them, you know, near our regular outlets, um, and it's nice too, also because the uh, charger will also come in. Um, it, you know, there's the battery and then the charger, right? Um, and sometimes you can you know, have them, you know, we have some of them mounted on like a vertical, you know, on like a wall. So it's not like got all these like random batteries with these cords on the floor. And so there's, um, the vendors are getting really creative, you know, for ease of use and making sure that they're not a tripping hazard. And, um, but yeah, right, right next to a normal outlet. And uh, somebody has a question here. They just got a larger yard and they're looking into a riding electric mower. Do you have any specific recommendations for them to look into in terms of, um, you know, attributes or other things they should be thinking about or things that you've found that didn't work that well on those? Yeah, so I think, I think for the most part, they definitely worked well um, in our experience. Again, it, you know, I think that the, um, the, 
the static does change a little bit because we're so used to seeing like that perfect. Again, um, with ours, one of um, Rob, our turf specialist, had mentioned was that like the mulching deck didn't have the power where it kind of like stood the turf up really straight enough to kind of give it like that really, you know, sharp cut that he kind of, you know, comes to expect with a gas power. Um, so I think that the power is, um, plays a large role. The um, battery life plays a large role, especially if you're going to get a ride on. That typically means you have a big space, so you want to make sure that the um, charge time is right. Something else that um, came up, which we never really thought about um, before, was um, and, and more so with our ride-on mower than anything else, was that we couldn't like hose it down afterwards to clean it because we're like, oh, uh, right? It's oh. Like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> and so we, 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 you know, you kind of have to use like compressed air, you know, to kind of, you know, because we, we want to clean it up afterwards, right? And so yep. that was something else. Um, I'm not sure if, if maybe some of those um, water-friendly LN electronics, I don't know how friendly that can be, but if, if there's any moments where, um, you know, the care for it um, on those aspects, so that's something I'll definitely look into our next round um, as well. And I think also, too, I think we shouldn't be scared to ask uh, the manufacturer, the vendor to come on out and test it out or, you know, call some of your neighbors and, and get on it, um, you know, and see, take it for a spin and see how it feels. Yeah, that's a great point. And do you, have you noticed that there's any, or I have not noticed this myself, others can type this into the comments if they have. Are there stores or organizations that do like kind of ride and mows, I guess, as opposed to ride and drives? Have you seen anything like that? You know, I, I, I haven't, but um, again, when we uh, were investigating uh, the particular, you know, manufacturer that we ended up going with the first time um, many years ago, uh, literally, it, we made such a big thing of it because they were bringing, like, one of everything. They had, like, trailers and everything. I said, oh, we invited um, – we're in downtown Manhattan, so we called New York City Parks, our neighbors, um, you know, at um, Hudson River Park, and, and, you know, some of our public park, uh, you know, sister parks, if you will, because we were like, well, we're making such a big deal of this. We should – they're here, right? Everybody should see it. And um, maybe it's like something we should start, right? I'll, I'll do it again and you guys can all come down lower Manhattan and try it out. We might take you up on that. I'm telling you, it's, I'm uh, telling you, it's one of those things. Nobody talks about electric yep. equipment. It's so weird. Yeah. Um, so another thing here, somebody mentioned that they have an electric or uh, snow thrower, like snow shovel type thing. Have you used uh -huh. those before? And do you have any uh, thoughts yeah. on those? I mean, if, my, if, if anybody in our in, the, in in our maintenance division is listening, please cover your ears. But no, we haven't. We have not tried the electric ones yet, um, and that is something that we're going to be investigating. You know, kind of taking a look at. Again, it's you know, you're, you're you want to make sure that you find that fine that fine line of making sure that we can all do our jobs safely and efficiently and productively. Um, while exploring opportunities to, you know, use electric equipment. Um, and so we haven't found that balance yet, but that's definitely something you can give me a call uh, about in the next couple of months because we're going to be trialing, trialing it out. And another question here about calculating fuel costs. Because um, if you have gas equipment, you know, you, you can keep track of the records of, you know, you've got a five-gallon, you know, tank or, what, or you know, um, gas can or whatnot. Um, do you look at that? Do you keep track of how much electricity is being used in any way, or is it so de minimis that it's hard to even yeah. calculate? Yeah, for us, it's, um, it, is, it is very minimal um, in the amount of electricity that the electric uh, vehicles have added. Um, we also have electric um, fleet of um, vehicles for our staff to use for the parks and stuff. So we kind of have a lot of electric equipment happening, uh, such as forklifts and other things in our, in our area. So the addition of the lawnmowers and the um, leaf blowers was not, um, not noticeable. Um, and, and we haven't kept track, we keep track of our fuel used, but I guess we haven't really gotten into the 
nitty gritty of saying this is for the off road, this is for you know the bobcats, this is for the. We haven't done that, but that would be interesting to to do. Mm -hmm. Um, so if anybody has any um, additional questions, make sure to type them into the chat box now. Um, and Ryan, do you have any final thoughts for people as we're seeing if there's any last questions? Yeah, again, I think that, um, you know, if there's anything that I've learned in my uh, time with sustainability is every decision, even if it's small, makes a difference. And um, even if you just commit to swapping out one, of your gas-powered um, pieces of a lawn equipment for now is a win. Um, and you guys can, uh, you know, anybody can call or reach out anytime if they have any questions. That's great. And let me just check for questions one last time. I'm not seeing any new ones here. So um, I just want to thank you so much, Ryan, for presenting today. This was fantastic. Um, you know, this is a lot of information that I'm certainly going to be, um, you know, taking into account. I'm looking for an electric rototiller. So um, some good things to think about here with that. I hope everybody else got a lot out of it too. Our next presentation, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, is Tuesday, April 13th. It's on sustainable outdoor recreation. Um, so thanks again for joining us and uh, we'll see you next month. Thanks everyone. Thanks, Brandon.